Okay. All right. Good evening, everyone. I'm going to start off by reading a little letter from uh, the Ukraine situation, uh, Baptist International Evangelistic Missions. Dear friends of BIEM, greetings from Ukraine. It was so wonderful to see many of our brethren face to face. Usually there are a lot of brotherly hugs exchanged with our Ukrainian brethren. Uh, this time it was even more so because of these difficult times. It took more than 10 hours to get from the airport in Krakow, Poland, to our destination in Trinopol, Ukraine. This is twice as long as normal, but the frequent checkpoints, traffic jams caused by the checkpoints and long border crossing made it a lengthy trip. Trip. Praise God, we made it without major incident. Thank you for praying. Um, it took us five hours of driving before we could find a gas station with fuel. Mm -hmm. uh, gas stations limit you to 20 liters, which is about five gallons. Uh, Pasha, who picked me up at the airport in Krakow, has a special permit, like a lot of our other guys, which allow them more fuel because they are delivering aid. Thankfully, he was able to fill up. Uh, since Pasha has four young children, he is allowed to leave Ukraine. Not so with most men between 18 and 60. Uh, you may have heard on the news that President Biden has announced an expedited process uh, has been developed for up to 100,000 Ukrainians to get to the USA without going through Mexico. Mm -hmm. uh, the details are not available yet, but the program is to start on April 25th which was a couple of days ago. Please pray that this will actually happen. On Wednesday, we drove back to our warehouse at the border to load up a container full of humanitarian aid donated to us from a businessman in Indiana. We brought five large vans and a big truck. It took every square inch of space we had to fit everything. It was a huge load, which our folks were glad to receive. Praise God for such abundant provision. Uh, in Ukraine, they celebrate Holy Week uh, according to the Eastern Orthodox calendar, which means Easter falls on April 24th this year, which was a week after ours. Uh, 30 minutes before the Good Friday service was to start in Lviv, uh, the air raid siren sounded. Uh, many were concerned since a recent bombing in Lviv resulted in several casualty, casualties. However, Pastor Yura said, we are going to continue with our service no matter what. If God does not protect us, no bomb shelter will. No one left, and God protected us all. Praise, Praise God. God. Uh, Sam Slobodian. So uh, I'm going to pray for these couple of things, and then we'll start uh, on our Bible study. Father, we uh, thank you for those that, um, your children that you have over there in Ukraine that are uh, serving you. And uh, Lord, we, we thank you for those that are, are making these trips, uh, carrying aid back into Ukraine. We thank you for... Um, providing for their needs. We thank you for uh, this huge load of, of aid that they were able to uh, bring back to Ukraine. And uh, Lord, for your protection upon uh, these churches and for the believers over there. And, and uh, Lord, we know that um, there's still a lot of uh, physical needs and aid uh, that is required. We also know um, spiritually that they desire to uh, really be a, a blessing and be salt and light and be sharing your word uh, with these uh, Ukrainians that have uh, seen the, the horrors of war and uh, Lord some have lost uh, family members some have had their families um, split up because of uh, women and children fleeing and, and men having to stay back and fight and so uh, we just pray that um, you would continue to uh, work in, in lives. Uh, Lord, certainly um, a, a reminder that our world is not this home, uh, is not our home. We're, we're just passing through and, and yet um, it's still difficult to leave your homeland. And, and so we just ask that uh, you would help each one that's going through these things. We pray that you would give wisdom to the, uh, the pastors and pray for safety as they uh, do the traveling and, and uh, Lord getting aid uh, where it's needed and uh, just continue to provide for them. And uh, thank you again, Lord, that you're sovereign and that you can uh, watch over these people. And uh, Lord, we, uh, we just pray that many would uh, see their need for Christ during these very difficult times. And we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, we are going to do something a little bit. First of all, before I forget, I have a handout for you.
that I'm giving you at the end. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to give you all the answers. It'll it'll recap it, so you don't have to take notes, but uh, it'll it'll help you kind of remember what was discussed. And so I'm gonna I'm gonna start with the question uh, that I probably should have started with, and maybe I've referred to it once before. Uh, but start with we we actually started this study on end times back in June of 20. So it's uh, almost two years ago. Uh, and this is a question we stood, should have started with, and it's also one that I probably should bring up from time to time. So here's the question. Now don't get worried about the big word. Um, here's the question. What are some of the presuppositions we need to have in order to study end times in the Bible? Now, don't let the word scare you. Presupposition is just a fancy way of saying beliefs, preconceived notions, beliefs that you should have. Um, and a lot of times they're assumed. Uh, but there are, there are things that before we even come to this book and study end times, there are th some things that we should believe. So what are some basic beliefs we should have? in order to study God's word about end times. I'm gonna give you I'm gonna give you the first one, and it's an easy one. They kind of build on each other, but this will get you started. First, God exists. Okay? God God exists. It doesn't do any good to study the Bible about end times if we don't think there's a God behind the Bible. Um, and we're gonna we're gonna to turn to different uh, verses. So let's uh, look at Hebrews eleven 6 Hebrews 11 6 and I'm gonna read the verses only because if you read them then the people online don't hear so it just makes a little more sense uh, for me to read it but Hebrews 11 6 and I cheated I wrote all the verse I wrote them all out so um, but this one I actually know Hebrews 11 6 but I want you to look at it Hebrews 11, 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. Notice, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is. He that cometh to God must believe that he is means he that cometh to God must believe that God exists. So this is kind of, people will use this as a, a definition of, of faith. Uh, Faith is we need to believe that God exists. And the second part of the verse, that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Uh, God is a rewarder of those that seek him. So that means he can be found and that there are ways to seek him. Okay, so what's God exists? Um, what's another basic belief in order to study end times from the Bible, what's another belief we need to have? Not only that God exists, but what's another one? Don't be bashful. That the, the words are accurate according. Okay, yeah. that, that he revealed himself in the Bible, and he revealed himself accurately. Uh, so God has revealed himself in his word. We know that most people, if they're honest, they will look at creation and say, yeah, this couldn't happen by accident. The creation points to God. And then we also have this thing called a conscience that no one else is around and you do something wrong and you feel bad <laughs> because we have a conscience. God puts that in us. But there are a lot of things we wouldn't know if God didn't give us what we call special revelation. So God has revealed himself to us uh, in his word and we need to in, in order to study end times from the word of God we need to believe that God gave us what what we need to know he revealed himself uh, second Timothy so you're in Hebrews go towards the front of the Bible just to not too many pages actually second Timothy 3 somebody familiar with uh, with these verses, 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. All scripture 
is given by inspiration of God. It is God breathed is what that uh, inspiration means. So it's, it's God breathed and is profitable. It's helpful. It's good for doctrine. That's teaching for uh, reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So God's word, uh, God's inspired word is good for all these things. Uh, verse 17, that the man of God may be perfect or complete, truly, truly furnished unto all good works. God's word equips us. So God exists. God has revealed himself in his word. What's, a, what's another thing? basic belief we should we should have God is able God is able yeah. okay um, I have it like kind of same thought but God is in control yeah. uh, God is in control because uh, wh why is it important to believe God is in control if you, if you don't believe God's in control you can change what you know who who is if God isn't right. who is if, if God is not in control, then everything is random. It's chance. It's, there's no sense to it. Um, why study anything? Because you can't figure it out. There's no big picture involved. Uh, and so we need to understand God is in control. We're, we're uh, you know, history is his story, what, what God has already done. And we know some of the future because God has given it uh, to us. God, God is in control. Um, Psalm 115. So if you go in the middle of your Bible, you will find the book of Psalms pretty close to the middle. Psalm 115. So God exists, God has revealed himself in his word, God is in control. Psalm 115, says, but our God is in the heavens. He has done whatsoever he hath pleased. God does what he wants to do because he is God. He is in control. And we need to, God says that, and we need to believe that. Uh, one more one, Psalm 135. So you're in 115, 20, 20 chapters. Uh, away with some, not that many pages ago. Psalm 135, verse number 6. Psalm 135, verse 6 says, Whatsoever the Lord pleased, whatever he pleased, whatever he desired, that did he in heaven and in earth and in sea, the seas and all deep places. Again, it's God is in control. Uh, God does what God wants to do. Uh, we puny man sometimes thinks we're in control. We are not in control. God does what he wants. We are only here because God allowed us to breathe today and God keeps our heart going. Uh, so, God exists. God has revealed himself in his word. God is in control. Uh, what's, a, what's another one? I got a few more. His ways are not our ways. His, way, his ways are higher than, than our ways. Yep. Um, anyone else? That's in Isaiah 55. We're not going to turn there, though. Um, you got another one? All holy. Pardon me? God is all holy. God is all holy. Yep. Uh, but what, what, do, what do we need to, what are some things, basic beliefs we need to have when we come to the Bible to study 
end times. Okay, God is in control. This kind of goes along with that. God knows the end from the beginning. Uh, that's a natural outworking. If he's in control, he knows what is going to happen in the future because he has the future planned and he controls the future. So God knows the end from the beginning. Uh, Isaiah, you're in Psalms, so towards the back of the Bible, a little bit more, quarter inch. <laughs> Try that, see if it works. Isaiah. Isaiah 46. Get there? Yeah. Isaiah 46. So God knows the end from the beginning. Isaiah 46, verse 9. Remember the former things of old, for I am God and there is none else. I am God and there is none like me, notice, declaring the end from the beginning. And from ancient times, the things that are not yet done. Saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. So there we have again the idea that God is in control. Uh, God knows the end from the beginning. Uh, God has already declared what will be in the future. And so we need to have that belief as we study end times, uh, that God has it all worked out. This one kind of goes along with that. God has a plan for how he will bring things to an end. Uh, you're in Isaiah 46. Go back to Isaiah 14. So towards the front of the Bible, Isaiah 14. God has a plan for how he will bring things to an end. Isaiah 14, verse 24. The Lord of hosts hath sworn, saying, Surely, as I have thought, so shall it come to pass. And as I have purposed, so shall it stand. I'm going to do, again, it's kind of maybe a little bit redundant, but I have a plan for how things are going to end. Um, and I'm going to bring it to pass. Uh, you don't need to turn there. I'll just read these verses. Uh, Revelation 1, verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. Uh, and then verse 19 says, Write the things which thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. Uh, God has a plan, and God has declared his plan and we need to, as we come to God's word, we need to realize, hey, God has said, here's what I'm going to do. Uh, number six. This is an interesting verse. Turn to Deuteronomy. So towards the front of the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 29. Deuteronomy 29, look at verse 29. The secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. So God has given us what we need to know, but God has not given us everything there is to know. There are certain things that only he knows. And you know, I think I mentioned this just this past Sunday. If, 
if uh, even, you know, I think the book of John says uh, that if everything was written that Jesus did and said that the world could not contain the book. So, you know, we'd need a wheelbarrow plus to, to bring our Bibles to church. And so God has given us what we need to know. There are things that are revealed to us, but there are certain things that have not been revealed. God gave us what we need to know. He didn't give us everything that there is to know. Um, you don't need to turn there. I'll just read this verse, Daniel 2, verse 28. Uh, but there is a God in heaven that revealeth secrets and maketh known to, the, to King Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days. Uh, thy dream and the visions of thy head upon thy bed are these. And then he goes on to explain the dream. And so uh, we, we have what God wants us to know, we have. Mm -hmm. We don't know some details, and I'll, I'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, here's one more. God wants us to understand what he has declared. God, this is a basic belief we should have. God wants us to understand uh, what he has declared, but some things are difficult to understand. Uh, this is kind of interesting, verse 2, 2 Peter, so way towards the back of the Bible, almost to Revelation, 2 Peter chapter 3. Peter 3, verse 15. 2 Peter 3, verse 15. And account that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation. Notice this. Even as our beloved brother Paul, also, according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you. So Peter is referring to the writings of Paul, Paul has given you wisdom that he wrote, uh, verse 16, that God used him to write, as also in all his epistles, speaking in, in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood. There you have it in black and white. Some things are hard to be understood. Peter says, some of what Paul writes is hard to understand. And we say, amen, we've experienced that. Um, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest or wrestle, uh, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. So it's interesting, if you, you kind of have to read between the lines here a little bit, but Peter is basically saying, Paul is writing scripture. Mm -hmm. Paul's writing scripture. And you know what? Sometimes it's hard to understand. And we would agree with that. God wants us to understand, but sometimes it is hard to understand. Okay? Um, so when it comes to interpreting, or when it comes to studying end times, we kind of, so some of those things we just do naturally. I mean, you study the Bible about end times because you believe there's a God and you believe God is an orderly God and you believe he's in control and you believe he's told us how things are going to happen because he's in control of what's going to happen and that's why that's why we study it. And when we do, it's hard sometimes. Uh, so those aren't new things. It's just kind of putting into your minds what you already have. You just don't think about it. Um, so there's a rule of thumb in interpretation that I have given you on more than one occasion. The plain sense makes sense. <laughs> there it is. Yep. If the plain sense makes sense, seek no other sense. Read it literally. Read what does it say? The plain sense makes sense. Seek no other sense. Uh, there, there is a danger in over spiritualizing things. Uh, what what do I mean by that? Uh, you you give things a secret spiritual meaning uh, when it may not be intended, and and you can uh, you can 
kind of over spiritualize anything. Uh, and if you're if you're not careful, uh, you can make the Bible say things that it did not mean. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean. And if if the Bible can mean everything, it really doesn't mean anything, right? If it can mean a whole bunch of things, then it means nothing. Uh, there is an intended meaning that God has. And here's, here's the tricky part. Uh, the goal in interpretation is what was the intent of the original author? What was the intent of the original author? And what would the original readers, what would the original receivers understood? What would they have understood? How much had been revealed to them at that point? The goal is not, what does it mean to me? Okay, that's called application. Interpretation is, what does it mean? What did God intend to convey to the people who first read it? All right, does that make sense? Application is one thing, but God has an intended meaning. And the challenge is, there are things that... We, we can't go back 2,000 years and experience the culture to understand. Sometimes there's figures of speech, okay? Um, I'll give you one. I've given you this one before. But one of, it was said of one of my daughters when they were in school that they were the hottest and coolest girl in school. <laughs> now you think about it, you take that literally, and that makes absolutely zero sense. But we all kind of know what that means, don't we? Right? We know what that means. They were the hottest and coolest. They, we, we know what that means. So the point is, there were figures of speech. There were things that, you know, a thousand years from now, someone, we won't be here that long, but a thousand years from now, what I just said won't make any sense to anybody. Okay? So when we, we have to think about, there were things that were said 2,000 years ago, and, you know, Moses was 1400 BC, uh, so 3,000 plus years ago, there were figures of speech that we don't necessarily, you know, but what did they mean? Right. What did those things mean to them? And so the, the whole goal of interpretation is what was intended by the original author to the original recipients. That's interpretation. Application is what does it mean for us now? What is the timeless truth? Uh, what, what, is, what is the takeaway that I can use now? But it's not whatever I want it to. It's what did God intend it uh, to mean? Okay, a um, couple, couple other things. So we, we also need, we have to understand that there is a need for humility when it comes to interpreting the Bible, when it comes to understanding uh, the Bible. Why? Well, what I just said, it's hard to go back in time and understand the exact situation they were in. And, you know, there's... Uh, there's things that we read and it's like, that doesn't make it. I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you one. Um, and we kind of can see this, but this is just off the top of my head. Um, Samson had a riddle. Remember Samson killed a lion. The, there was honey in the lion and he was at his wedding and he made a deal with all these guys. And they said, you tell me the riddle and I'll, I will provide you X number of changes of garment, garments, and if you, you know, if, if you tell me what the riddle is, then I will do this for you. If you can't tell me, then you need to do this for me. And do you remember what do you, he, so the, the people of the town really leaned on his fiance. Really, you, you brought this guy here. He's going to take all our stuff. And he says this. Maybe you remember this. 
if you had not plowed with my heifer, yeah. <laughs> he called his wife to be a heifer, but the if you had not badgered her and harassed her, so that's one that, okay, it's not literal, but it's a figure of speech that we can understand because of the rest of the story context of the story that goes with it and so um you know but sometimes it's hard to put ourselves back in there uh and understand and because it's difficult sometimes we can get it wrong um a second reason we need to demonstrate humility is that uh not everything is spelled out i was uh, i was listening to vcy uh, crosstalk and i listened to it on monday but, you know, they have all the episodes or all the things online. So I will go back online and I will look at one that I'm interested in and I'll jump on the treadmill and I'll listen to it. And they had one uh, was one that I listened to recently was about 50 end times events. Let me see if I wrote it. The final 50 events of world history. Final 50 events. So it was from Revelation. Okay. And so they were talking about different chapters, and then one chapter came up about the two witnesses. And of course, I my radar screen goes up, the two witnesses, and then he says, yeah, they started their ministry at the midpoint. And I'm like, I was going to buy your book, but now I'm not going to, you know, you got it wrong. But the Bible doesn't exactly say, I gave you, I think, a very good argument as to why uh, the two witnesses are at the beginning and go till the middle, not start at the middle and go to the end. But you know what? The Bible doesn't spell it out. And so we can agree to disagree on, on certain things. And so that's where humility comes in, where it's like, okay, um, you know what? It doesn't say he sees it this way. I see it this way. We agree to disagree and we go on. So that's kind of a bunch of background information that I think is good to remind ourselves of about from time to time that as as we approach it um god has given us what we need to know okay there's no um we're waiting for revelation chapter 24 or chapter 23 you know it ends at 22 there there is we aren't waiting and there are some people that um think now that they are new prophets that have new revelation that God has given to them. Well, guess what? This book says, you add on to this, you add on to yourself the, you know, the plagues of the, I mean, it, it just, it, and it should make sense to us that God starts in the beginning. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And then when we get to revelation, it wraps everything up. It concludes everything. And so, uh, God has given us what we need to know. Do we know everything? No. Is there some confusion? Yes. Is there some um, figures of speech that we don't understand? Yes. Uh, on the other hand, if the plain sense makes sense, seek no other sense. There's people that take every number and make a hidden meaning out of it. And that this number doesn't really mean that. It means, I, I was going to bring it, um, there was a, I have a, a book on hermeneutics. It's interpreting scripture. And anyway, it's a funny verse from uh, Isaiah, somewhere in Isaiah. And it was, it's, it's like you would never in a hundred years get that interpretation. Uh, it talks about the something budding and this and that, budding and bringing forth and seed and all this. Um, and then the interpretation from the Jews was, well, you're supposed to make four rows of plants, and the one in the middle is supposed to be this. And the verse has absolutely nothing. I mean, it, it doesn't get into that, but it, they just spiritualize uh, everything. So it's, it's maybe, if I think of it, maybe I'll bring it next week. So, okay. Um, so there's things we need to agree to disagree on. But here are, and you know what, I'm not... Um, Turn to Matthew 24, Matthew chapter 24. Some of these, I might just uh, give you the reference. But So there, there are some 
let's let's think through these a little bit. There are some non-negotiables when it Matthew twenty four. Uh, there are some non-negotiables when it comes to end times. Thing, there's there's end times events that are in the Bible that are going to take place. Uh, what what are some of them? We've been talking about them. What are what is what are some of the thing? The future events haven't happened yet. They're going to happen for sure. Write it down. Mark it down. It is already written down. What are some things that are going to happen in the future? Don't think too deep. Think bigger. You mean like they're in tribulation time? That's one of them. No, tribulation. Okay, there is an event called the tribulation. Jesus, we're in Matthew 24, right? Mm -hmm. Matthew 24, verse number 21. For then shall be great tribulation. There will be a period of tribulation on earth. And there's numerous references to that. But we know that there is coming a day and, and there's going to be, as you read through this, there's going to be some horrific things that happen uh, during that. Look at verse 29. Here's another one. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. And the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Who is the Son of Man? Jesus. Jesus. Jesus is coming back. Jesus is coming back. You don't have to turn there, but Acts 1, uh, the disciples are there, and Jesus is lifted off into heaven, and all of a sudden there's two angels, and the angels said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which you have seen go into heaven, shall so come in like manner. Okay, so Jesus is coming back. That is an established fact. Do we know when? No. Uh, but he is coming back. So uh, we, we know Jesus is coming back. We know there will be a time of great tribulation. Uh, believers, uh, we, don't, we don't need to... Yeah, let's turn there. First Thessalonians. We come to this from time to time, but it's good to... First Thessalonians. First Thessalonians 4, 4. Are we there? Sorry, First Thessalonians 4. But I would not have you to be ignorant, meaning uninformed brethren, concerning them which are asleep. Those who have, and not, oh, I'm sleeping, it's nighttime. No, asleep is referring to those who have passed away, believers that have passed away. But I would not have you uninformed brethren concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. So even so, them, those who are deceased, that are in Christ, that have died in the faith, will God bring with him. The him is Jesus. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord. Jesus returns, we're alive and remain, we shall not prevent, which means go before them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. There are people that are born again, that have died, 
when Jesus returns, the dead in Christ shall rise first, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. And so there's, uh, people have questions and disagreements about when this event happens. Uh, there's, some people equate it with the second coming. Uh, there's, I believe, a very distinct difference between Jesus coming in the clouds where believers meet him versus Jesus coming to earth in power and glory and judgment during the Battle of Armageddon. Uh, people lump them both together. I don't, I, I believe they're two separate uh, events. And two more, and we're done. Revelation 20. So these are, these are events that God speaks about. So again, we're, here we are. God is in control. God knows the end from the beginning. God will orchestrate how it all ends. God has given us information of how it all ends. Some of it's hard to understand, but we need to, to study it. But then there are these, these, these certain pillars, these big things that God has said that are going to happen. Jesus is coming back. Believers are going to meet Jesus in the air. There will be a time of tribulation. Revelation 20, verse 11. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I, found, I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. God keeps track of this. These works are not good things uh, because we're judged by them. The sea gave up the dead which were in it. Death and hell, uh, Hades, holding place, delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged, every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. There is a future judgment where people will stand before God. And this, this judgment here, Revelation 20, it's not everybody's at that judgment and God decides who gets in and who doesn't. It is everyone at this judgment are those who have rejected Christ. They don't have Christ. Their name is not written in the book of life and they are judged according to their works. I've said this before. You know, we would expect Hitler to have a worse punishment than someone else. Okay, even, even this 14-year-old boy, you know. Um, but God and in Death and hell are cast into the lake of fire. Right now, you know, I, I, if you're super technical, people do get out of hell. But only to stand before God at this judgment and be forever put in the lake of fire. So it's not they get out of hell for a second chance. It's they get out of hell for their judgment. Uh, whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast in the lake of fire. So we, we have... Jesus is coming back. Believers will meet Jesus in the air. Time of tribulation, this great white throne judgment. And then uh, Revelation 21, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven, saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. He will dwell with them. They shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. There shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any pain, for the former things are passed away. And so we have that to look forward to. That's how... It, in, in the future, that's how it's going to end. 
uh, that there will be a new heaven and a new earth. And so there's, uh, you know, obviously there's some discussion about the order. Uh, there's no question that the new heaven and new earth have to be at the end because it wouldn't make sense for it to be, uh, be any other time. But um, so th those are kind of non-negotiables uh, in regards to end, end times, big events. Uh, Millennial Kingdom, there's people that just, you know, that who don't take Revelation 20 literally where it talks about a thousand year reign of Christ. So um, I, I left that off. I, I think there's uh, people that are saved that may not necessarily have that right. Um, I think it's going on now or whatever. But anyway, um, I know this kind of like drinking water from a fire hose, but any, any questions, uh, comments? Shouldn't you, always, shouldn't you um, even be aware of the negative things that are in the Bible? Like the, you know, should, should like we the be? Antichrist and, yeah, and... Oh, you know. it's, well, and we've been studying the Antichrist right. in in the tribulation. I mean, the, these are big picture things, uh, but yeah, we uh, we've been drilling. You know, we've been drilling way down into um, yeah. the tribulation, the Antichrist, who he is, what he does, um, his the you know one world government, all those all those kind of things. So, mm -hmm. it, yeah, um, you know, there's what's challenging sometimes when we teach end times is there, okay, um, there's three different views on when the rapture takes place. There's three different views about the thousand year reign. Ah, millennial, there is none. Uh, uh, post millennial, you know, where it's after, uh, you know, so they, they have these different different views where I've kind of stayed away from. I, I'm trying to stick to what, you know, it, it gets confusing if you talk about too many of the other views, I think. So I've been trying to stick with, uh, you know, I believe the Bible teaches the rapture is going to come before the tribulation. And rather than spend a lot of time on the other views and make it, I think, could be confusing. Now, I'm certainly willing to answer those questions, but... Um, you can, you can spend, if you give everything equal time, then you go away thinking, now what is the, what's the right thing? Or if we emphasize what I think yeah. scripture teaches. It. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I got one here. <clears throat> Revelation 17 and 16. Oh, yeah. And ten horns which shall sawed upon the beast. They shall hate the hawk. I understand that. And shall make her desolate and naked. And shall eat her flesh. And burn her with fire. Is that something that's going to happen yet? Yes, that's the future. So that's this is this is the destruction. This will be the destruction of the one world religious system oh, okay. that is in place during the tribulation. All right. So it's yeah, we looked at that last time. It's not a literal person because the Bible verse seven or eighteen tells us it's a city and uh, tells us it's a. Uh, seven mountains and it's it's kingdoms um, or the, or the you, yes we believe God wrote it yes we believe God revealed. and you know what he wants us to understand it and so uh, those are things that like I said I think just good to be reminded of from time to time all right anything else so I think the best thing is is to get saved before it all happens uh, amen definitely wouldn't want to be here if, if, the, if we all got raptured tonight, everyone is saved and then the ones that are left behind go through this stuff. If you think of the chaos, mm -hmm. that's, I mean, COVID is nothing compared to what that's going to be. I mean, you're talking, you know, who knows how many people gone. Imagine calling people on the phone. They don't answer. Call don't another answer. person. They don't answer. <laughs> Call another person. They don't answer. Go over to houses. No one there. Come to church. No, no one there. <laughs> no one's here. Yeah. Yeah, good. All right.
All right, Art, you want to close in prayer, please? Father God, once again, we thank you for bringing us together here tonight that we can study the end times. And Father God, we just thank you for the book you have given us mm -hmm. that we can find it all in there, Lord. For all we have to do is read it, understand it, Lord, and study it. And it will tell us exactly what's, what's coming, what's going to happen, where we're going to be, and everything from there on, Lord. And we just thank you for that. And then we ask now, Lord, that you would watch over each and every one of us as we travel home. Give us journey mercies and safety. Bring us all back again on Sunday. And I thank you in Jesus' name. Yeah. Yeah. It still don't like me. Still don't like you? No. <laughs>